Welcome to Tea in the Garden. Today's episode is going to be a little unhinged, a little ADHD, but also super fun and super tea. So sit down. Super tea. <laughs> and truthfully, when, when are we not unhinged and extremely ADHD? Let's be honest. Yeah. Today, we are talking about some of the most tumultuous times in our lives. <laughs> you like that word? Uh, yeah. And we are talking about the ye old Saturn return. <laughs> the Saturn ye, return. ye old return of Saturn. Mm-hmm. So what is a Saturn return? You know, we're here at Tea in the Garden to give you all of the cosmological tea. A Saturn return is when your Saturn placement or the sign that Saturn is in when you're born Saturn travels 29 and a half years around the Earth to exactly the position again that it was when you were born. It has a 29 and a half year orbit. And this is the time, right, late 20s, early 30s, where your life starts to shake up. You get shaken up. You go through these karmic, comprehensive final exams. Saturn is the planet of karma and lessons, for better or for worse. And it is an amazing time to shift the karmic cycles that you're in, to get out of the ones that you've already learned from and you want to get into new ones, right? Because we're always in some sort of learning, some sort of karmic cycle. So yes, this is a time maybe you are of age, you've been through this, maybe you're going through it right now, um, or maybe you're coming up to it. But we wanted to share today on our individual journeys with the Saturn return. Um, Priscilla and I happen to be still in ours until May, 2025. So we're still going through it, but so much has happened. You usually see a lot, a lot of life change in this time, a lot of major life events. Um, Usually a major life event will kick it off. And it is a time of immense growth or immense suffering and of course you can have a nice little medley of both right but (laughs) it it is a transformative time where you really truly become an adult you get you know clapped every which way and depending on how you deal with it you can end up on an amazing timeline for yourself or a not so amazing one and not that the universe is so black and white where we pass or fail but there is an air of that to this Saturn return energy. So I think we should go maybe like one by one. Um, for sure. Yeah, for welcome sure. to story time. Welcome to story time. Uh, we're hoping that this provides you with some peace or maybe some reflection if this time in your life has already come. Um, and we just wanted to share and have that intimacy with you. So Lauren had her Saturn return already and Oh my gosh. What happened though? Oh, I mean, it literally changed my life. So um, how long do Saturn returns usually last, right? It's not just like a couple day thing. Two and a half years. Yeah. Yeah, like two, three years. Makes total sense. Okay, so my Saturn return um, started about uh, 2014. I was in the military at the time. I had just gone through... um, a selection process um, to get into another aspect of the military. Um, And so with that came a lot of like physical uh, demand as well as uh, mental demand. And um, yeah, it all came crashing down all at once. So I got accepted into civil affairs where I was going to be a team medic. And so I got into what they call SOCOM, which is Special Operations Combat Medic School, where they train for nationals as well as um, special operations and pretty much like anybody special um, or supportive special operations um, who is doing medical care because they need people who can, um, specifically in the, the part that I was going in civil affairs, we would go in and live with foreign nationals and render aid, like medical care, um, livestock care, clean water, building schools, that kind of stuff, but in order to get information. So that's what I was training for. And um, 
everything in my body was shutting down at that point. I was an insomniac uh, for almost three years by then. Um, I was, I had like 8% body fat um, because I was like training insane amounts in the army and then also going to the gym and doing cardio um, and like counting all of my calories and, and all of that stuff. And then like binging because I couldn't handle it anymore. Cause I wasn't giving myself enough calories for my body to function or my brain to work. Um, I was even sleep eating. So like when I would, the rare occasions that I would fall asleep, I would wake up and there would be food all around me and I have no recollection of eating it. Right. So like my world was falling apart. I was starting, my PTSD was starting to flare up. My anxiety and depression was starting to flare up. All of the symptoms were happening. And, um, my body physically gave out and I tore all the ligaments in my ankle in a training exercise and had to have reconstructive surgery on my ankle, which then gave me nerve damage and co other complications. And they started my med board out of the military, which started my dark night of the soul. That was my key event was being told you are being put out of the military because I had at that point unconsciously assigned all of my worth to being a soldier. I didn't know that that's what I was doing, but that's what I was doing because I didn't have any at that time because of the trauma prior to the military. Um, so I joined the military as a way to get out of a unhealthy and, and um, unsafe marital situation. And, uh, and also because I had something to prove, you know, that I needed to do something that people needed to do something that people respected because I didn't have any respect for myself at that point. So when they told me that I was being put out of the military for medical issues, um, it, it literally like gutted me. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I had to contribute to the world. I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, it was really scary. And then, um, two weeks after finding out that I was going to be med boarded, my husband at the time left in the night and took everything and went to Peru. <laughs> I didn't know that he went to Peru. That is so funny. Put a pin in that. That's coming up in the in the return transformation. I didn't know that yeah. he went to Peru. He went to Peru for six months on a on a deployment mission. Yeah, with well, civil he's affairs. Deployed there. Yes. And that's where I was going to end up possibly what? going as well. Yes. What? New information. Yes. yes. So yeah, this, yeah, this is the lore, you guys. This is the, the lore. lore, lore. <laughs> low, low lore. So, <laughs> so he leaves in the night. He takes everything, right? He takes all the furniture. Um, he empties my bank account. He cancels my insurance. Like anything that we were on together, like he cancels it and he dips. And a couple of weeks later, I get an email with an address that says, send divorce papers here. And I was like, that was the awakening point for me where I was like, so I had a lot of um, religious trauma and upbringing, right? So at that point, I had totally stepped away from that and wasn't sure what I believed exactly, but knew that what I was taught as a child was not it for me. Um, so at that point was the first time I kind of reoriented to myself to something bigger than me since then, since trying to talk to like the man in the sky, sky daddy, um, where I was like, okay, universe, I'm listening. There's obviously something going on. It was like the first time in my life I was like, okay, pretty much every guy I've been with up until this point, has acted like this, looked like this, cheated on me, been super, super traumatic, super toxic, super unhealthy. And so was I. So like, don't get it twisted. I was not the perfect one in this situation. Like I was choosing these people because I matched these people. But that was the first time where I realized like, oh my God, the common denominator is me. Like if I want my life to change right now, because I'm at rock bottom at this point, What's the next step? I have literally no idea what it is. So universe, whatever you are, whoever you are out there, I'm ready to change. Just give me the next step. Literally. That's what I, I was like in the fetal position, crying on my floor, 
behind my door, my bedroom door. And this was my conversation with the universe. Like, just give me the next step and I will do it. In that moment, you gave full consent and they were like, bet. Bing. Yes. And everything just unfolded. It was bizarre and insane and amazing. But to try not take up so much time, the, the thing that came first was I need to be alone. I've never been alone. I've always been in a relationship um, since I started dating at a very young age. Um, you know, a lot of trauma there. I needed to be alone. So I, I committed to dating myself for a year. That And that started a lot. I got into yoga. Um, and in my very first yoga class ever, it was led by a practicing Tibetan Buddhist named Laura. And in all of her um, yoga sessions, she would say, like, you're enough just as you are. And the first yoga class I was ever at, she said that. And I had literally never heard those words in my life. And it was just like a complete unlocking for me, a complete release. And I just cried and cried and cried. And I did that for the first like three or four yoga classes that I went to. I just cried my eyes out. Um, and that exposed me to meditation, which is um, what started exposing me to everything else. So from the meditation that I started doing, um, I started wondering about like, what are spirit guides? What are, you know, are angels real? Because at that point I still didn't, I still wasn't sure, you know, because it came from the Bible. So I'm not sure about that. So we'll see what else is out there kind of thing. Um, but I had started getting into meditation and, um, you know, things were shifting and changing, but I was still like really suffering in a lot of ways. I was still very depressed. I was on like six or seven different medications for sleep, for mood stabilizers, um, for my anxiety, et cetera, et cetera. Right. A lot of them contraindicated to one another. Um, but that's what my experience is with the medical system is, oh, you have a symptom. Here's a pill. Just take this. It's going to be fine. Um, you'll be on it the rest of your life, but this will, you know, fix it for now or make it tolerable. But it wasn't tolerable for me still. Like I was healing and growing and, and like experiencing so much healing, but I just was still on all this medication. So in meditation, um, I kind of got cues to start looking for my spirit guide. And I actually went on Pinterest and found a guided meditation that I later found out was a shamanic journey that led to me meeting and having a real life experience, whole other conversation for another day. I'll tell that another time, but I met Archangel Michael in the physical as a result of my very first shamanic journey. Um, and he told me that I needed to start working with cards and that would be one of the ways that I could help people starting to help people and also um, that I would learn like more steps, the next steps that I would need to take in my path, etc. So the very next day I went out um, to try and find a deck of cards and that's where I got hired basically on the spot to start reading cards full time. Um, and so that was a very quick transition, right? So I started reading cards full time for this such uh, manifest people. Vibes. Oh my god! Oh, it's so oh. crazy. Well, it instantly um, gets tired. <laughs> So you got discharged two weeks later, the husband leaves. How much time was it after he left till you got hired? Um, maybe a year's time. Okay. Yeah. Like a year's time. And then I get hired. Um, and that is when I started getting, I started like opening my gifts a lot. Right. And learning about like all of spirituality and all of that. Um, but it wasn't an ethical practice like it wasn't a the people who practiced there weren't ethical practitioners um so it really was an unsafe environment especially for me as a new uh, awakening empath and like it was lessons on lessons on lessons there but i had been getting these messages in meditation shamanism shamanism i didn't even know what it was um and that and at that point i was still building my gifts so i had the practice of i'm not going to look stuff up for like two to three weeks and I'm just going to try and discern and like intuit and feel what it is. And then later I'll go check and 
It's almost like to check my answer, right? And that helped build my trust and my intuition. So I was still sitting with it at this point. And one of my very first clients, Kathy Johnson, had come to me and I had told her to get into real estate and she did. And she started selling like million dollar houses and we like stayed in touch. Um, and she reached out to me one day out of the blue and was like, hey, I don't know why, but I really feel called to tell you about this lady. She's a shaman and she's offering spiritual mentorship. Um, and, but in order to start the six month spiritual mentorship, you have to get a shamanic healing. And that was my first like experience with a shaman or shamanic healing. And it was the most profound experience I've ever had in a healing setting, um, up until this point. And yeah, it just shifted everything. But now from her meeting her, she became my teacher and I worked with her for, uh, you know, years, years and years and still, you know, have a relationship with her now it's in a different way, but yeah. So literally what I'm doing today and like even the decisions I'm making now and the things that we're manifesting now are an unfoldment of my experience that started in 2014 and 2015. Um, 2016 is when I was like full-time practicing in it, on it, you know, meeting Shannon, starting my training. So it's, it's all led to this point. And now it's like, uh, like Priscilla was saying before we got on, right? Like these cycles, I feel like the cycles are coming around again, but now it's like, I'm benefiting everything that I experienced from that point. I'm benefiting now the lessons that I learned in that time period in, in this timeline, mm -hmm. like you said. Wow. Yeah. So in one year's time, you went from being a soldier to being a psychic. Yes. Full time. That is the sign of return. Full time soldier, <laughs> full time psychic. But like, yeah, it hurt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like yeah, it was ripped. For, it was ripped from me because I was committed mm -hmm. to that. I just signed another six year contract. Mm -hmm. Like I had committed. I that was what I saw my life doing. And then the universe was like, mm, think again. No, not. Uh -uh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Can you imagine where your life would be today? Ten years later, almost ten years later, if you had. I think had I might be dead. What if you I had think I might be dead? Moment of surrender. Yeah, I think I think I think I might not I probably might not be here mm. just because of how depressed I was mm -hmm. all the medication I was on like I was drowning and I had mm -hmm. tried everything that people told me to try. Mm -hmm. You know, I taken the pills, I done the therapy and it helped to an extent, but there mm -hmm. was so much more that needed to be done. Um deeper that just hadn't been touched yet. I didn't have the tools for yet. And I really, you know, was putting myself in unsafe situations, being with unsafe people, unhealthy situations. It just wouldn't have been good. Like mm -hmm. for me, my children, it wouldn't have been good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you obviously love your career. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> This is the best. I literally, people ask me and I'm not being a smart ass, but people are like, oh, how are you? And I'm like, I'm living the dream. Like I'm living the dream. Even, <laughs> you know, shit happens. Life is not perfect. Right. But that it's the dream. Mm -hmm. This is all a dream. And I understand that that's part of it. And I can take the beauty in all of it. But we really, we really get to create our reality now. But it took a lot of, um, deconditioning and deprogramming and ripping out old beliefs and programs. Um, sometimes as I'm kicking and screaming to hold on to them, but the universe is like, no, absolutely not. So what would you tell? Yep. That's someone, what would you tell someone <laughs> me and Priscilla, who's going through their sound of return? <laughs> um, to dig in, don't skimp. You know, like this is the time and I've watched you guys, I'm watching you guys do it, you know, but, but for those of you who are like, oh my God, I don't know if I can do this. Like, this is really hard. Like, yes, it is. And it's for a reason. Do the hard thing. You will thank yourself later. Don't skimp out on yourself. Put everything you have into this. That would be my advice because then you're going to get the most out of it. Mm -hmm. 
Wise words, Lolo. Thanks. That's so wild that he got, like, the husband that left you got stationed in Peru, and then you ended up a year later studying yeah. Peruvian shamanism. Peruvian shamanism, exactly, exactly. And at the time, like, I didn't, I thought Peru was cool, but I didn't know anything about that. They had shamans down there, nothing spiritual at all. Nothing spiritual at all. I wasn't even in that sphere at that point. So, oh my goodness. Thank you for sharing all of that. Yes, of course. I tried to make it palatable because it, it's, it's a palatable. lot. <laughs> I think it was a great timeline. It was a great timeline. Yeah, thanks. Who wants to go next? Rock, paper, scissors. Wait, we, okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'll go. <laughs> twist, twist my arm. Um, yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Can I make a quick note? I'm so sorry. I'm already in Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We met. You happened to book a trip and were in Mexico with me a month before our return started. And shit already yeah. started going down. Wow. I didn't shit was going that. down at that time. Was, yep. Absolutely kicking off at that time of our lives. Before shit kicked off, and then you were there with me mm -hmm. when it started acting up. We, you're, you're about to hear the details, everyone listening, of what she's referring to, actually. And it's probably the first time a lot of these stories are being told, for myself at least, in a public capacity. So I'm actually kind of excited and only as we had started this conversation, I started to, because time is such a weird concept for me, you know, neural mm -hmm. spicy brain and all. And I forget a lot of times or all the time, really, what the timelines of my life is. <laughs> and I only realized while you were sharing, Lauren, like what I would be talking about. <laughs> so it's going to be really yeah. interesting. You know, it's going to be really interesting. So for me, you know, my awakening and healing journey started really young. And I feel like that was such preparation, you know, my immense trauma and self work, I think initiated me into the Saturn return in a, in a graceful way to some capacity. I feel like, um, there was a little less of a distinction in a sense for me of, my Saturn return, you know, versus what I had experienced for the entirety of my first 28 years, because my life was so um, hectic. I know you guys relate in your own ways. And I think that gave us so much, um, yeah, preparation, right, for the, capa the capacity to handle it and to face it with courage, you know. Um, and I think this has been one of the most special time periods of my life. I've, 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 I've gleamed through my experience and relationship with Saturn's energy, literally as an entity, right? The planets are a living force. Like they are as much of an energy in my experience as the elements are, you know, as earth is, um, they're a living energy and part of us. Saturn has this energy that can really easily make you feel like a victim, you know, if you so choose, but you know, is actually so benevolent, but it happens through, um, yeah, quite literally, it's like your shoulders out of place and the doctor sh has to shove your shoulder back in because you dislocated it, mm. <laughs> is, the, is the energy, you know? So it's very easy to feel um, in pain or victimhood throughout it. That's one thing I wanted to kind of note, right? Is like, I had to really exercise shifting that view throughout my experience, you know, um, of my life. And then especially during my Saturn return. So for me, Saturn return has been all about dad. Surprise, yeah. surprise. I was going um, to say that's your kickoff event. <laughs> yes. Quite literally. If you, if you guys uh, have any doubts about astrology, I, I'm sure listening to our own musings will give you some great evidence for the efficacy of the system and the reality of it really, right? But um, within one week of my 27th, sorry, 28th birthday, wait, 27th birthday, sorry, 27th birthday, which is generally when your return starts to begin, you know, roughly around that time, 
my father passed away. My dad literally left the body at the very enunciation of my Saturn return. And my relationship with my father has been really kind of the, the entire lore of me, you know, of my entire journey, of my healing path, of my work in the world. And my identity has surrounded deeply around my relationship to my father and the father energy. So a lot of these themes came up for me in my Saturn return. My father passed away uh, after many, many years of a very, very painful experience of life that he was going through as an addict, as a man who had a many, many regrets and a lot of self-loathing, you know, um, on his on his life and his choices. But also a lot of healing happened. Um, and it was a really beautiful time of, of closure the, the year leading up to his death. I would actually say for me, my I feel my Saturn return started a little early in man gen style. Um, I wanted to get a you know a start on things, and I feel like this that previous year to my twenty seventh birthday, so twenty six for me, was like you know laying all the seeds for what was to come. That year is the story I'm mostly going to talk about actually, and the story that most people have never heard this part of my life. I don't even know if you guys have heard all the details of this part of my life. Some of them you have, but. Um, I had many relationships throughout my young life. I was always a serial monogamist, um, you know, and a lover. I have a Libra stellium. I am naturally very, very drawn to expression in relationships of all kinds. And I also had a lot of, you know, things to uncover and work on in myself because of my own instabilities in my childhood. I never had that anchor of a masculine presence in my life. And I definitely sought it, 100% sought that out in others. What was interesting for me is that I didn't, I didn't actually date people like my dad. You know, sometimes it's like either way, like Lo, you, I, you went to like one side of it. I went to the kind of other mm -hmm. where I played it really safe. I dated mm -hmm. people that were like really opposite to my dad, but also weren't actually a match for me, but I didn't know it at the time. You know, I was, I was like literally just seeking such safety and stability that I went for like that exact thing. Right. I went for people who I think I actually didn't, I didn't feel threatened by or feel I could be fully hurt by in a sense that I knew were maybe more into me than I was to them or like things like this. Right. And I played it really safe. However, after I went through my divorce at a very young age, um, around 24, 25, 24, I decided to kick off my first year of like being single, dating myself, like exactly like what you were experiencing, Lauren, which is cool because I did like declared the same thing to myself. Um, I was dating around, I was exploring my sexuality. I was exploring a lot of things like about what I actually liked and what I didn't like. And, you know, questions I never really got to ask myself fully. What do I really want? You know, what am I really interested in what do I really like? You know, what's compatibility for me? Um, and in the in the journey of this exploration, I started dating people that were very outside of my box before, you know, like I was taking risks on dating people that had a lot of character traits that were like nothing I had ever dated before. In particular, during COVID, I ended up dating someone who was an addict. My entire life, I was like, hell no, I will never, ever date an addict because my dad. I was like, it was like a my creed. I will literally never date anyone that shows any sign of being like my father. If you have a temper, if you are charismatic, if you are, you know, any of those magnetic qualities, I will like run from you like the plague. Then I was like, I got totally pushed to the other polarity, right? In all of my exploration, I started seeing, wait, what if I actually like those things? You know, what if, what if I am interested in those things? What would that look like? So I got into this relationship with this man who was in recovery. So he was sober for multiple years, but he was an addict. And if anyone here listening has any experience with addicts, with AA, with therapy, you'll know that 
even when in sobriety, addicts have very similar pers- like traits regardless. Like they have qualities that come through regardless. And this was my first experience of being in love with someone who reflected so many qualities of my father. It was the hardest and worst relationship I have ever been in. Um, it was extremely um, taxing on me, very emotionally, psychologically manipulative. And I, within a matter of months of dating this person, was like a shell of myself. I had never been in a situation like that. It was when I was watching myself in this relationship, I literally was like I was having an outer body experience. And I was like, how did I, like, how am I that girl right now? I used to judge that girl so hard. How the heck did I become like that girl? How did it happen to me? You know, like I was having these these kind of thoughts and questionings and thank goddess, I had done so many years of work before this happened. Like I wasn't really like immature in many ways. So I got out of it quickly, which is like the ultimate blessing of all of this. I learned the Saturn lesson. I feel very quickly, relatively speaking, but I still went through it. It was seven, eight months of this relationship dynamic with this person where it could have been years, you know, right? It could have been gotten way more abusive. It could, I could have gone way off the deep end um, if I had stayed. And thank God I pulled myself out. The kicker for me was after many months of very slowly, very slowly having my kind of like rose colored glasses pulled off. I mean, you guys know I am naturally an extremely trusting person, um, an extremely innocent person in that sense. I really don't see those things in people very, very um, upfront. And I give give a lot of space for, you know, benefit of the doubt or like seeing the best, right? And this was a huge chapter of me learning the difference between somebody's potential and what they're actually showing you and what they're really doing to you and, and creating boundaries on that, right? Um, but after months of really realizing, oh, no, I'm like being taken for a ride here. <laughs> like I'm being really taken for a ride here. I am being so taken advantage of. My love, my empathy is being harvested by a narcissist. Surprise, surprise. Oh, yeah, no, like this person is a narcissist, like by clinical definition, not like, oh, I just didn't, like, that's just my ex and I'm going to call him a narcissist. No, like he really is a narcissist <laughs> and was checking every single, you know, one the first time I saw one of those therapist uh, videos and checklists about it, I was like, oh, God. You know, it was like, it was like every single thing that I had literally experienced from him. And I was like, oh shit, you know, um, this is worse than I thought. And the very end kicker for me to sum up this, this chapter, um, I was emotional wreck at the time. Actually, this is the only time where I was like canceling my portal classes a lot. If you guys remember back then there was like, Mm -hmm. there was just this like few months where it was like the only time I've ever like repeatedly rescheduled my portal classes more than I ever had before. That was during this time because it was like, I couldn't do my work, right? Our work is healing. Our work is teaching and holding space. And I was so dying inside, you know, I was so like, so in pain. It was very hard for me to do my work. And I got to this point where I had an absolute you know, multiple breakdowns, um, faced huge shadows in myself of the, um, you know, the fear of letting go of love and attention that I felt was so necessary. You know, it felt so needed, even though mentally I knew it wasn't. I, it's like, it was this like addiction in a sense, like a chemical kind of addiction, right? To this person's love. And I realized that for the first time I understood what my mom had experienced, you know, Mm -hmm. and it makes me like so emotional because I was a really, I was a really strong firstborn eldest daughter, right? I was always like taking things on my back. I was like the second mom. 
I didn't understand how for so many years my mom allowed my dad to be to abuse her so bad. I was furious about it. I was always like, mom, why do you let dad do that to you? Even at five years old, my mom would tell me I would come to her and be like, mommy, why do you let dad say that? You know, and it was like I had this huge epiphany in that moment. This is exactly why I'm here right now. It's like I'm literally getting the chance to fully walk through my like ancestral, my maternal line patterns and sh- and DNA, you know, that I carry and make a different choice. Like not stay with this man, not have children with this man, not allow this man to change my entire trajectory of my life and actually hold that standard for myself create the boundaries that feel impossible for me in this moment to create, you know? So it gave me so much insight. It gave me immense healing with my mother actually and a deeper understanding for her and with my father, because I actually saw my dad from a whole different light too. I saw the, you know, the, the pain and the suffering in that man in the same way that I could see it in the person I was madly in love with, you know? And even when they were hurting me so badly, right? And I still, but I could still see, I could see and hold all of it, right? And I had to learn to walk away. And so I had so many moments where when I was in that relationship during that year, um, or, you know, a little less than a year, I worked on my relationship with my dad immensely. And what's crazy is because I was getting all these constant, um, invitations because of my relationship with this man to you know revisit these things that i hadn't looked at in many years because i was like i'm done with that i healed that many years ago like i released a lot of that and i really had to a certain extent but there was more there right and it was getting really shown to me and uncovered through this relationship i was re getting to revisit a lot of more compassion more forgiveness more conversations that i hadn't had with my dad and what was so crazy about it all is that he passed away months later. This happened like the year before he left the body. And I also feel like it was so auspicious and meant to be for that reason. You know, it was like, again, a perfect example of how Saturn is doing something for you. That is, you know, really in some ways you feel, I don't want this. I didn't ask for this. Like, this isn't what I wanted, but actually, it brought me huge gifts, you know, huge gifts mm-hmm. through that, uh, through seeing those things, through healing, getting to heal my, you know, these karmas that are carried in my family, literally in, in my in my DNA, and finally having that breakthrough, right? And as a result, my father passed away with like full completion. I felt totally complete with his passing. We were in a beautiful and very harmonious place when that happened, and that you know kicked off this last two years almost of my life that has been the greatest chapter of my self-sovereignty you know it was really the initiation for me of like you have nothing external to anchor you that thing that you've been constantly in your like inner child's heart looking for that anchor in your dad in your guru in your partners And all these things that you really wanted to help give you surety, clarity, stability is like, you have to cultivate it. There's no other choice at this point. Right. And so I got to spend the last like year and a half, two years, like developing that to a whole different level. Right. Like having my own house from the, for the first time, my business doing better than it's ever been and getting to just fully pour myself into my purpose and building all of ASG has happened literally since all of that happened, right? That started my partnership with you guys. That started an entire new chapter of my life in in my work in the world and how I carry myself and my business. And what Savvy was alluding to, my last part of the puzzle, and then we'll transition to to Sav's story, um, is that, you know, after the release of the hardest relationship I've ever had to let go of, the release of my father in the physical body, the final nail in the coffin was the release of my guru. And I talked about this we were on my Instagram podcast. recently. Yeah. Also on one of our podcasts, I had met, I have mentioned this a few times actually to you guys here, but I don't think 
any of those things could have happened without the other, you know, it's like, it was all, it all was a snowball effect that really helped me to do these major releases of the father wound in my life of mm -hmm. the masculine in my life in, in, in the wrong ways. And, you know, led to me then six months later after my father's death, also releasing my spiritual father, who I actually called my father. Like I, I related to my guru for, you know, eight years as my dad, I saw him as my truly as like my father. Um, he filled that role for me from the moment I met him. It was like, he's the dad I always wanted to have, you know, and I related to him as my spiritual father. Um, it was, you know, very entangled and deep and attached connection that I had that was excruciating for me to also look at and release over time. And it took me a lot of time during the container of my Saturn return um, to get me here. And, you know, now I'm heading into like 29. Um, I feel like clearer than ever, freer than ever. I know that lessons are not done yet, but I do think that I've been passing the Saturn test and I'm really proud of myself for it. And mm -hmm. I'm excited to get to like reap the results of continuing to listen to the lesson and learn from it and develop myself further in that area. So Saturn has been all about the liberation of the father wound for me mm -hmm. um, and facing, facing these traumas in my like my line as well. Yeah. I feel like when people have a Saturn return, it's like Saturn rips out the binky, which is like any self soothing yeah. that you were doing that mm -hmm. is not going to move you towards your path. And like, it yeah. gives you that kick in the butt towards what it is. If you're That's willing like to surrender to it towards mm -hmm. what it is that you're meant to be doing. It is yep. the father that gives you what you need, not what you want. Yeah. I mean, I literally, you guys, one thing I'll say is in, if, if any of you are in your Saturn return or going to be in it soon, you will see that if you bring your awareness into it, you're going to see very obviously that you have many crossroads moments. I feel in Saturn returns where it's like, I literally saw if I do what my nervous system is telling me to do right now, like I cannot walk away from this person they've already hooked me. I'm in love with them. I've gotten, you know, in the, in the clutches. Um, I don't want to walk away. I saw the whole timeline. You know what I mean? I like, I could see it. I could feel it. And I saw the timeline of what it looked like to do the really hard thing, but the thing I knew at the, at the soul level I had to do and was right. I saw that timeline too, you know, and I had to like step toward it even though it was excruciating, like so excruciating in those moments, you know? And I think Saturn, yeah, gives us a lot of those opportunities, those crossroads. Wow. Hell yeah. Oh, and now over to Sav with the uh, flip side. My Saturn return has been entirely about my mommy wounds. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, we get we're getting the whole spectrum. I love it. Yay. Yeah, Sab, we got to hear yours to complete our Whoa. Saturn story time and how literally our, ours crossed over as well, right? Like the first call that I got related to my kind of getting booted from my spiritual organization and my guru was physically while I was in Mexico with Sav, while Sav was going through the craziest earth shattering part of her life. <laughs> yep. Prior to, and that was all leading up to Sav moving in with me. Yes. And then us forming ancient soul gardens. The entanglement was like all there. I, <laughs> let me say, it, I mean, thanks you guys so much for sharing. Um, there, it is tough, but there are so many rewards that can come out of this period of life. And I know yep. that I... I like to say that the biggest gift that I've gotten from this, besides doing getting to do ancient soul gardens with my besties, or like our life purpose together, right? Every day we show up to work and it's us, right? Mm -hmm. It's not some middle-aged, sassy, like alcoholic corporate guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's 
it's the girl that, um, that's my work life. That's who I get to work with. Um, so there's that, but, um, equally my Saturn, it was a person. He is the embodiment of Saturn and he came out of absolutely nowhere. Um, and just completely derailed my life in the most amazing way. It was like the most, it was the biggest crossroad moment of my life and not to like make my whole life centered around men but like I think I'll lead up to that I'll tell you I'll, I'll tell the, the leading up lore but um this person who is the embodiment of Saturn is like when we met I had no idea we were going to be together like of course I found him handsome um I just had this deep 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 knowing the first time we were on a zoom together that we were going to work together for a very long time in like a higher purpose way. Um, so yeah, mommy wounds, being mommy, going through these cycles of being mommy and then people pushing me like too far with that, taking too much advantage and me mm, letting it mm-hmm. happen because I felt like I owed it for them, right? There's that like give forever mommy wound type thing until like, they got to a certain point and then I'd cut them off. And there was just a cycle of that my entire life leading up to kind of like six months ago. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit um, where I would do the most, give the most to the relationships in my life, platonic and romantic, um, be the mother, be the most responsible one and move into that icky unbalanced karmic agreement with them until it got too far and then i'd be like okay now get off of me goodbye forever like i can't you you know and blame them when i was the enabler all along and they were just like responding to that right so you know it's so funny because my mother i'm i'm home in michigan my mother's visiting me right now she's downstairs And I've been telling Lauren and Priscilla, she's leaving today, this afternoon after six days. I've been telling Lauren and Priscilla that this was like one of my final tests, I feel, is like, can she stay with me in my home, in my new life, where I'm this healing, independent woman, grown, going to be 30 this month, um, and not react and just observe and be in a lot of acceptance and forgiveness. And it has been tough. It has taken a toll on my body, but I have, you know, I haven't freaked out at her. I haven't yelled at her. I haven't, um, you know, in the past, there was that cycle of like, I will let you come through all of my boundaries because I don't have any boundaries. But then once you're here, I feel like I've been, um, violated. And so I'm going to, rain down my wrath upon you right that's kind of like how i experienced my mother growing up right and then that was the pattern that i took on and mimicked them in all of my relationships um until kind of like last year this year um and it's an incremental process of course right but the first big event of my saturn return the first kicker the first bump in the road uh, was our Mount Shasta retreat. <laughs> oh, Mount Shasta. Oh, God. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. So my Saturn return. Oh, we also, I just want to note, right? Because your Saturn is in your 11th, right? 11th house. So just an interesting note. And mine's in my 7th. Lauren, where is yours? I don't know. I'll go look right now. Yours Hold is in, probably in the 12th. She, oh, no. What am I talking about? I don't know. My chart. Saturn, where are you at? What's your Saturn sign? My Saturn is in Sagittarius. Okay. So that's your 89th? Let me look. Let me look. With the Aries rising? Yes. The ninth house. In my, it's Oh, hold on. Yes, in the ninth house. Okay. And it was retrograde. My, mine is in Pisces. Holla. Oh, man. Well, it's so... Saturn is in Pisces right now. So me and P are have the Saturn in Pisces. It's mm-hmm. come full circle, 29 years. Um, and depending, you know, it can start as early as 27 or as late as 29, but it is like a two, two and a half year period. So um, 
And Mount Shasta is when I met P in person for the first time. Yeah. When I met both of you for the first time, actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We had been crazy. Working. So Mount Shasta retreat was March of 2022. We had been working together for a year at that point on the portal. And we hosted a retreat. And I had absolutely no boundaries. I had no way to communicate. I was seemingly incapable of communicating with people when they were angry with me. There was no way I could like, you know, Mm -hmm. because retreats are very triggering times. There was a lot that didn't go to plan as it happens. Um, My (gasps) boyfriend at the time, we, and my, okay, let me back up just a tiny bit. We were lied to. First of all, we were lied to. About, about the accommodations yeah. that we were going to receive <laughs> at the location that we were hosting a retreat. A year later, the place burned to the ground. Let's just say that. Let's just say like, <laughs> they had. it did. And we had nothing to do with that. That no. was just what happened. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying that, Lauren. <laughs> and we had although our gu- our guides, on the other hand, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, that place um, honestly was a little sinister, but. Carry on. Actually, January 2022, I am 27. My grandmother passes away. Now, my grandmother was uh, more of my mom to me. Uh, She and I had a very close bond. Her ashes are three feet away from me currently. I still work with her, still talk with her. She helped raise me a lot. She was that, like, I've had a mother and two stepmothers, and it's just been like, can I have a great, good mom universe? No. How about now? No. How about now? No. But my grandmother was that like maternal figure for me. So she, she was, of course, she passes away, right? Makes sense for the plot. And, um, you know, there was normal grief. It wasn't terrible because I had made her promise to work with me from the beyond. And she said, yes. And she was very old. She was like 91. She lived a long life and blah, blah, blah. Um, but so that kicks it off and then we're at mount shasta and we're lied to about these accommodations this is my first retreat i'm ever hosting i'm a virgo okay i like to have my ducks in a row i like things to go well i like to plan and so you know you can't plan very well when the details you've been given to plan with are incorrect so what we had promised to our guests was not the truth of what was actually there and so that was obviously invoked a lot of emotions and a lot of people, I would say it was like 50, 50, 50 percent of the people still had an amazing time because we had such incredible practitioners. It was a very beautiful place in nature. And the other half were very stuck on like, these are the things that I paid for and this is not what I'm receiving and I'm angry. And I get that. But I had personally no way of dealing with that emotionally. And my partner at the time, um, along with the passing of my grandma, had started to emotionally abandon me. And that's kind of like another story. I won't get into that too much, Um, but. That's another lore story. We should like the, oh man, I have a lot of lore, but (laughs) yeah. We have a whole episode talking about like our exes and like. Exes lore. Why we had to date them and what did we learn? And like, you know. Oh my God. We should literally be a podcast that's like. This podcast is about everyone we've ever dated. <laughs> okay, next time, next time. And oh give God. them all give them all heart attacks but <laughs> as they all Google no, we, us and go listen to it. For for legal purposes, we have to give them fake names. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll we will tell all. the stories. So this partner's name was Smanthony. <laughs> <laughs> um and you know, I have no judgment towards him. I wish him well. Um <laughs> It was the beginning of a we had been together two years and then this whole like year of 2022 was just like and i'm deep in the medicine wheel i'm going through the mesa which is this like intense shamanic training um where a lot of your wounds get lit up and um and i'm sure i'm probably the villain in his story like what i in many ways wear that with a badge of honor to be the villain in people's stories. Um, but yeah, that whole year was just a slow down, down slide of, 
we all knew the plane was crashing, but it just wouldn't crash. <laughs> until it did. We're going to get there. In, so, until Priscilla landed in Mexico, for some reason. For some yeah. reason, then it crashed. Priscilla is landed what I was... in Mexico. To jump ahead for a moment. Priscilla landed in Mexico, and I'm like, hey, um, shit just blew the fuck up. And then two days later, we're in the nail salon, and she's like, hey, <laughs> shit just blew the fuck up. <laughs> My entire life is disintegrating. Oh, me too. Oh, yay. I guess that's why we're here. Here we are thinking we're just co-working in cafes in Mexico, having a good time. And I land and Zab's like, yeah, so like, you know, you're coming to stay with me and my partner. We're, we're breaking up. <laughs> yeah. like, oh. the, the universe is like, I've sent you your emotional support person. I know. Here's I the shit. I was her golden retriever. So... So yeah, Mount Shasta, I mean, we can talk about Mount Shasta, what happened all day. Overall, a lot of people had a very positive experience. It was beautiful, but it it was honestly like top three most stressful weeks of my entire life. Like it mm-hmm. aged me um, because, you know, I had no way of like setting any boundaries, making any decisions, being able to disappoint people, being able to communicate effectively. And I just completely took on everyone's anger and pain and frustration. My partner wouldn't even stay in the same cabin as me because he was like, <laughs> right? That was the beginning of the, we were already in a bad place, but like he, he didn't, he was just fucking off and having fun the whole time, like great for him. Um, and so I felt so alone, but like I had, I was, I felt like defenseless and that's, that was like uh, my mother wound, right? That was like the, I'll take all of the pain because I'm unable to draw a line in the sand. So fast forward a few more months, I'm, I've saved up enough cash. I've been working in my own business for two and a half years at this point. I've saved up en- enough cash. I kind of see the state of the states, the United States, and I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm living in Colorado. He's graduating with a law degree and you know, no shade, but it's Virgo season. He never became a lawyer. That's a whole, we'll save that for the next episode. Um, so I'm like, okay, we're, I'm moving to Mexico. And I've decided that he needs to come with me because, you know, it's a very machismo culture. It's better if I have a man with me. And I want to try to make things work because I believe everything that's going wrong in the relationship is my fault another mother wound issue, right? No boundaries, no gauge or sense of what's the actual reality besides taking on all the blame, taking on all the pain and frustration. And, you know, he gladly gave that, that fault and blame to me. So it was like, I had to fix it because if I didn't, then it meant that I wasn't really a healer. And I was in this deep shamanic healing training. So, we go to Mexico and we move there and things don't improve for six months, right? We move in July um, and January comes around, January 2023, and we haven't been intimate for over a year. Um, we don't see each other in the new... Red flag. Red flag. Yeah. Just going to say red flag. Like, And that was completely his choice, not mine. So that was like a physical, emotional, spiritual abandonment. And yeah, I'm still here. Like, I'm going to make this work because it's my fault that it is bad. Which sounds silly now, but that's like what I was unconsciously believing at the time. Um, And I had this moment where I was working with a really, uh, Melanie, with a, a mentor. And I was like, there's so much beauty in my life. I get to live in this gorgeous country. I've escaped the evil empire. Um, my audience online loves me for that. I create all this content and I have these clients and these students and I'm, my work life, my work is my life. I'm very fulfilled there. Um, and it was kind of out of balance in that way, but, but my relationship is just like, not even really a relationship it's like roommates it's like i'm mommy i was paying 100 percent of the bills which is so wild because it will later flip to the opposite (laughs) i was i was doing everything 
I was mommy and he just resented and hated me more and more and more over time. And I kept, you know, putting more and more of the blame on that. And it's like this moment is approaching in the timeline where I'm going to be hit. I'm going to have that crossroad epiphany moment of, oh my God, how did I get here? How did I get to this point of helplessness, hopelessness, blaming myself for everything, not being able to have any boundaries, not being able to have any standards? How the fuck did I get here? And I had the opportunity, I had this, it felt like I was standing at a train station and a bullet train came zooming by for three seconds. And I knew in those three seconds I could jump on the train or I would miss it. And I jumped on the train. It felt like, it literally felt like that. Like I had, that timeline came, Voop! are you gonna jump, are you gonna jump? Last chance. And I jumped because, well, for many reasons, but, and that train was the personified Saturn. He's in my phone as Sam Saturn. And I met someone who was my student that January, right? Where I was like, I gave that full consent moment and I was like, Melanie, the mentor, help me open up to what's meant for me. Like, I know that I can do that, but like, I want you to put my shit on blast on this energetic grid. Like, fuck me up, bam. I, I, I can't do this anymore. Like, I'm sad and rejected every single day. Like, I'm crying every single day about this fucking guy. Um, and like, I feel stuck because we moved to this foreign country together. Like, how the fuck did I get out? Yeah, you were so isolated. Mm -hmm. you were so isolated. I was. Um, I felt like I was in a, a jail cell, you know, in many ways, even though it was literally paradise. Right? It was a tropical paradise. So that evening, we did, we did some work in the Akashic Records. That evening, um, I had an onboarding call with a student. And that man would later become my, we just celebrated a year and a half together yesterday. And I had no, first guy I ever let into any of my schools. And we took a half hour conversation into four hours because we couldn't stop talking about our shared vision for humanity. By wife energy. <laughs> <laughs> he is my best friend. And just like, you know, every pot has a lid type vibes. Like, I've never been so compatible with another person, let alone a romantic partner. And we talked for a few weeks, platonic, right? Because I'm still in like egregious amounts of couples therapy with this other guy trying to salvage anything because I feel like I have to yeah or else mm -hmm. I'm xyz and not xyz right mm -hmm. but it had been over for a long time and we get to this point and I'm on the beach in Puerto Vallarta Mexico where I live where I worked so hard to move there and all of my branding and everything was surrounding like escaping and that's the moment the bullet train came by. It was February 6, 2023. And he was like, he had had, there's a lot more I'm not telling, but he had had these visions about like that I was this girl that he had been dreaming of and looking for. And he like confessed it to me that it was so. And I didn't realize that I had like so quickly, this person I never even met in person, fallen in love with them. And it all hit me at once. Like I'm in love with this person. We have this deep pur purpose together. And 
but what the fuck my entire life could change. I mean, literally spent all of my money to come here and to set up this new life and to have this like dream of a retreat space and an off-grid homestead and like this is the direction I was taking my life but then there's this out of nowhere entirely different path out just appeared and that was Saturn being like you can continue down this path of self-abnegation or you can have this new one. It was like, it was like a fresh start. And I sat there perplexed on the beach, February 6th, just like, oh my God, like, the only thing more impossible than leaving was staying. And it wasn't just like a guy leaving a guy for a guy, right? It was literally completely different karmic agreements. Like, are you going to be the scapegoat, the one at fault, the one always making up for everything, the mommy? Or do you want to be a woman? Do you want to be a goddess? Do you want to be a queen? Do you want to have your power in that way? Do you want to be with someone in, in an environment and an energy where you can have boundaries, where sometimes it can be other people's fault. Sometimes other people can apologize. So I hope I'm making sense with that. I hope that makes sense about like the, the choice. And I was like, yeah. Do you want to be an equal? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I was like, look, even if things in, in the sky never work out, I have to choose the, the, the new guy, Sam. I have to choose myself. And it felt like for the first time in my life, I chose myself instead of bowing down and taking the blame. Does that make sense? So. And then you came and lived with me and it was like the best six months sleepover ever. So I, yeah, I was like, two days later, we're in couples therapy and he, st I let him start. He complains about all the wrong things that I did that week. And then it's my turn. And I say, I don't want to be in this relationship anymore. Yeah. And, I, and then, and then Priscilla flies in the next day. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> mind you, I haven't even met this guy in person. I don't know what he smells like. I don't know his in-person vibes, but I knew that I had to, even if it wasn't going to work out with him, like I needed to get out of this hole yeah. that I put myself into for 28 exactly. years. You know? Exactly. It was for you. It was for you. It was all for you. So I ended up moving back to the States with Lauren for six months while we got, me and Tim got to know each other. And then a year ago, moved in here in Michigan, very different from Mexico, never thought I would live in Michigan, um, but it's a beautiful state. And there's so much more that I can say, but like, it was the, f like Saturn hit me like a fucking train where it was like, hey, what if you chose yourself for once? Instead of where that abnegating, always overgiving mother wounded mm -hmm. person. What if you actually said, hey, fuck you to somebody that you love and had like such a hard boundary not in like a I wanted to remain friends with him but did not um not in like a you're done cutting you off forever but in like a you have used your last ha partner this is the boundary does that make sense guys so yeah that expression just killed me though there's so much more I can get into because that was a year and a half ago but like that moment of like you have this opportunity to choose a timeline where you love yourself, you put yourself first, and you're not going to put up with bullshit anymore and be the one right. be the punching guy, be the one who takes the blame anymore. Are you going to do it? And I did. And I think about sometimes, what if I didn't? What if I had stayed in Mexico? And how much deeper would my misery be? Yeah. That's I think it's, like, it's so fascinating. 
it's so fascinating that like no matter the story it's like the the lesson is also so parallel for all of us you know it's chilling it's chilling and like that choosing yourself in the right way you know in the best ways is so much part of that lesson that the boundaries are so much part of that lesson whatever area in our life they're they're showing up right some people may not struggle with boundaries in relationships but maybe in their work or in their purpose or with themselves or with an addiction like right it can come in so many forms but it's it's really cool to see that those synchronicities across the board and even how our all of our timelines intervened in each other's interwove with each other's in these pivotal super pivotal times of our life is is crazy and we have we have to talk there's so much more we have to talk about related to that like how am you thinking about so many things but we will get to it saturn comes and he asks show me here is a, here is an opportunity to show me where are your boundaries where are your standards mm-hmm. how much do you trust yourself And you have many opportunities where you kind of return, but usually there's like a, a kickoff and a headliner moment. Mm-hmm. Well, there's so much more. We didn't even get into me and Lauren's punching match earlier this year. No, <laughs> that's okay. Nor did, nor did we get in. I realized I didn't even come close to finishing mine either, my timeline either, but that's okay. We we have a lot yeah. more time for, for stories. You guys heard the... What was what was meant to be heard today and we will we will share more for sure but i hope everybody gained something from our story times and lessons that we all learned in our different capacities related to our saturn returns in our lives mm-hmm. yeah. thanks for listening to us yap bye everyone <laughs> bye guys See you on the next episode.